What's up, everybody? It's Ronald. And like many of you, I am at home in the middle of social distancing in an effort to slow the spread of coronavirus. It feels a little bit like an extended snow day gone wrong. And if you're anything like me, then you know there's only so many days in the house before you start to get a little stir crazy. So I thought in an effort to stay sharp with my production skills, I would come into your homes and help you through this tough time. So until I can get back into a theater safely, I'll be here on the couch. All right, this is Ronald and I am on the couch. So forgive me in advance for any weird recording issues you may have, or if this doesn't sound as clear as my normal stuff, I normally do a better job of working on sound, but I'm just sitting on the couch right now. So I'm not too much worried about it. Uh, What I want to do is help you guys through this. Um, I know a lot of you guys have streaming services, so Let's start by reviewing, uh, and actually just when I say reviewing, I don't actually mean necessarily gauging the good or bad, but let's just go through my list of what I've been watching on Hulu recently. We'll start with Hulu and then maybe day by day, we'll take another streaming service or I don't know, see what you guys think, but, uh, we'll go day by day. We'll take it one day at a time. So, uh, let's see Hulu. What have I been watching? I've been watching 90 Day Fiance. Now, it's on Hulu. It's available. There's so many seasons of it, so many iterations of it. 90 Day Fiance is about, typically, it follows an American who falls in love with someone outside of the United States in a different country, and they are attempting to marry them and bring them into the country on what's called a 90 Day K-1 visa, meaning that you have 90 days to marry this person. So the whole idea is that so people aren't just out here getting married, but rather, but rather they're actually, uh, I don't know, in actually in love with these people and actually trying to create relationships with them. I don't know. The point is, it's a crazy show. It's absolutely insane. All of these people, typically the majority of the relationships all meet online. Um, they always seem like scams to begin with. In a lot of ways, this show is like Catfish grown up. And if you, oh, by the way, Catfish is also on Hulu. So if you want to watch either version uh, or more than one stage of human disillusionment, especially when it comes to attractiveness, you should definitely watch Catfish and 90 Day Fiance. It's its own case study and what humans think of themselves and what they think other people think of them as well. Uh, another show I'm watching regular show regular show is a cartoon on cartoon network it is crazy super surrealist um if you like cartoons definitely something to go with it's it's very fun to watch uh it's not for everyone definitely not for kids well and i mean kids will watch it and a lot of the kind of more adult themed stuff will probably go over their heads but it's it's generally very silly and it's like fluff but it it always has these crazy surreal elements in it where you're sitting there wondering if this real is this not real even though you're watching a cartoon which is crazy but very funny check out regular show uh my personal favorite that i'm watching over that i've watched on hulu is called happy endings happy endings is a show that was on abc probably in the mid aughts mid to early aughts and it had damon waynes jr in it as well as uh See, I'm not going to remember his name off the top of my head. Eliza, Eliza, Eliza Cuthbert, I believe her name is. Um, some others, uh, Casey, don't remember her last name, but she was on SNL for a little while. Uh, it's an eclectic crack cast of people and it's a group of friends. And essentially, it's almost like a, a 2000s versions, version of Friends, which I actually appreciated because they had a black person on there. And they just kind of treated, they treated in generally, it just seemed like, these relationships felt more fun. This storyline felt more fun. There's only three seasons of it because it got canceled after three seasons. But honestly, there's 24 episodes a season. So that's nearly 75 episodes of television. And when you watch the first couple, you're just going to want to keep watching it. You'll just binge right through it. Very enjoyable show to watch. Lots of joy, lots of jokes. Um, 
I just, I don't know. It's hard to explain why I like it so much. It's mostly their interactions. The jokes come very, very fast. There's a lot of reference humor. Um, but once you get used to the rhythm, it's just, I find myself rewinding and laughing over and over again. Great show. Happy endings. That's on Hulu. Law and Order SVU. I don't know if all of Law and Order SVU is on here. I know the most recent seasons are. So if you're caught up with everything that you watched on Netflix of Law and Order, you could switch over to Hulu and watch Law and Order SVU, which we all know is the most superior form of Law and Order. I will not be taking any ads on this. I don't want to hear about anybody who watched original Law and Order. And, oh, it's just, no, come on. Like Law and Order SVU gives you the exact kind of crime cases that people apparently want to watch. Uh, it's Honestly, I think Law and Order SVU is kind of like the feeder into people who are craving true crime cases because Law and Order was just like they were very grisly with everything while still being very censored in their approach. I don't know. Anyway, uh, if you need something familiar that's going to, you know, keep your mind off of uh, what's going on around you, Law and Order SVU is always a steady standby. Superstore. Superstore is a great show. It is like The Office. It's like a blue collar version of The Office, even though The Office could be arguably a blue collar show. But this is really about people who are working in retail. They're working in what is like a Walmart adjacent slash Target adjacent big box store. And it's all about their interactions with one another, uh, living their regular lives. I found as somebody who worked in retail that they're very accurate with the with the way that they talk. Uh, uh, and specifically the dialogue. And when I say that, I don't mean just the, like the zany things they get into, but the way they talk about actually working in a retail establish, establishment feels very familiar. And even their interactions with customers, it all feels very familiar. Very funny show. I believe there's two full seasons on Hulu. And then the third season might be out now. It might be the third or fourth, but there's a lot. There's a lot of it that you can watch all on Hulu right now. Uh, Rami. Rami is a, I believe it's an FX show, if I'm not mistaken, that is now on Hulu about uh, an Egyptian American Muslim man who lives, uh, who now lives in, where does he live in New York? I don't remember. I don't know. Is there's 10 episodes, the entire first season, it's all on Hulu. You'll binge right through. It gave me a lot of a feel. It, it felt to me like, um, like Atlanta or uh, Insecure, that same kind of like a very, realistic vibe where they're like they're really talking about situations that we kind of talk about as millennials we talk about all the time this is not for kids don't show this around your kids as a matter of fact anything i just said <laughs> aren't really for kids except for maybe um uh, you could probably watch superstore around your kids and be cool they uh it'll be just like a regular sitcom there'll be stuff that goes over their head and stuff that isn't like really dwelt on very long so that was rami uh, the good place, of course, I love the good place show for the whole family. Um, I like it because it's silly, uh, for people who aren't as depth, who don't really want something, um, too deep, but for people who want something deep, it's good for them too, because there's these philo philosophical questions they have on this show that just really make you just pause and say, man, I never thought about that. So Maybe I should check. Maybe I should think about that. I don't know. The Good Place is a great show. Teared up on the very. It's over now, but the entire series, I believe, is now on uh, Hulu. And if you can't get it on Hulu, I believe all of it is on Netflix as well. If it's not, come back and find me. I apologize, but I know a lot of it is on Hulu. Um, if you want to start from the beginning, maybe you start on Netflix and then switch over to Hulu for the most recent ones. Uh, there's a show on Hulu. It's a Hulu, Hulu original called Dollface. Uh, starring Kat Dennings, and I was surprised how much I liked this show. I really was. Uh, it was, it's a show about friendships, um, and Kat Dennings is the main character, and it's about her friendships with uh, other women who are around her age and uh, socioeconomic status. Uh, and it's, I don't know, it's just good. It's hard. It's also a show that has some surrealistic elements to it, meaning that, you know, there's parts that it starts off like kind of as a regular sitcom, but then there's obviously fantastical elements in it. But those didn't really distract me from the main storyline, which was the issue she's having dealing with being a single woman or a recently single woman and dealing with what comes with that. And it's, it's, it's very interesting. I liked it. I was uh, surprised that I liked it. I just kind of started watching it on a whim and just blazed right through it again. Just easily bingeable show. I think there's 10 episodes on Hulu right now. 
Um, Hulu recently just took all of FX's, FX and FXX's content and put it all on their platform now, which means you get the classics like The League, uh, Archer, Atlanta's on there, all of that stuff, entire series are all on Hulu now, but they also put some new stuff on there. There's a show called Devs, which I really like. Um, it, it kind of, uh, gives me a lot of Mr. Robot feels. It's not as good as Mr. Robot. And when I say really like, I should say, I like it. I don't really like it, but I like it. Um, it, it gives off Mr. Robot feels, but it's not quite Mr. Robot. And I'm going to give them some more time to figure it out. There's only three episodes available now on Hulu, but it, it's not so bad. Uh, Dave is another show starring Lil Dicky, AKA Dave bird, who is, uh, a rapper in LA and it's, really it kind of just covers his life as a white jewish rapper in la and i think that uh if you know little D if you know little <laughs> i said if you know little dicky if you know little dicky you'll get it like you'll you'll kind of like immediately resonate with him with it if you don't i would encourage you to look at some of his freestyles and stuff and then watch the show on youtube and then watch the show and then it'll probably kind of be a little more a little bit more cohesive for you um, and then also there's a show on there called Cake, which is weird because it, it, it kind of watching it, it reminded me of almost like an adult version of Sesame Street, where you have these like on Sesame Street, when we watched as kids, there was all these little sketches. And then there'd be like some sort of main storyline that went throughout the whole episode. Like Tommy was trying to find his shoe. So he had to talk to Big Bird and then Oscar Grouch. And then he finds it and then he learns a lesson in it. But it's all cut up between the entire it's cut up between the entire episode and between that they're teaching about numbers and letters and taking you on field trips and all that. Everything's less than two minutes long. That's what cake is. Cake is like that, but it's just like all these like little entertaining vignettes. But throughout the entire first season, there's this overarching story called Oh, Jerome. No. Oh, Jerome. No. Yeah. Oh, Jerome. No. And it's, <laughs> it's hard to explain, but watching it, it made me wish that that had been the whole show. Like all the little vignettes were very entertaining, but watching this overarching like little mini series that goes on between each like little vignette, just it's it was good and it resonated with me. Um, so really liked that. That's also on Hulu. So for those of you looking for streaming stuff, you can go down through the list. I'll repeat it all again. It's 90 Day Fiance, Regular Show, Happy Endings, Law and Order SVU, Superstore, Rami, R-A-M-Y. The Good Place, Dollface, Devs, Dave, and Cake. Those are, uh, that's about everything I was watching now. Sorry for those plosives that you guys just heard. But yeah, so um, you know what? I'm going to go away for a second. And when I come back, uh, we'll talk a little bit about what I did today. You know, mommy going to go back. I'll tell you all now. So uh, today was kind of like a standard work from home day. Except for the fact that now that I know that I'm working from home, I've decided to, there's a pile of laundry or a pile of clothes in my closet that has been there for months. And it's either been bigger or smaller, depending on how quickly I'm changing out of my clothes and throwing them into this pile versus rooting through the pile and finding something to wear. So in the middle of all this, what I've been doing is slowly, uh, what's that word when you bring something down? Ugh, I've lost it completely. It's the word when you. I don't want to say consolidate, whatever. I've been slowly taking clothes out of the pile uh, one at a time. And I've been doing it in parts of 10 per day, which means that every day I'm washing a load of laundry, drying it all off and making sure that uh, I fold it up and put it away. So this has kind of been my, this is going to be my quarantine project, which is going through this whole pile of clothes, folding them all up, putting it away. It's still, it's one thing that I can control. So I'm working on a little bit every day washing a load of clothes, going through, sorting, seeing what I need to throw away, seeing what I need to keep, that type of thing. And it's keeping me occupied, keeping me busy. So that's one thing I'm working on. You guys can check in with me on that through March 27th. And I'm sure I will maybe have it figured out by then. So yeah, um, now I will go away for a second. And when I come back, uh, we'll have somebody on the show who's giving me their thoughts on coronavirus. And then I'll give you some final thoughts and then, yeah, we'll figure it out from there one day at a time. We'll be right back. In 
all honesty, I think that right now, one of the things that is bothering me the most about this mass hysteria surrounding the coronavirus is that no one is denying that the virus can be deadly. No one is denying that it is a scary virus. Um, What we are seeing (laughs) is complete lack of regard for humanity. You know, schools shut down in my community and the first thing that every compassionate mother in all of the mom groups I'm in started to rally together and say was, hey, there are kids that rely on free lunches and free breakfasts. You know, Richmond, Virginia, where we both came from for college is 100% free and reduced lunch. And how are those kids going to get fed? You know, there's also the immunocompromised community. And I'm not just talking about the elderly population in my community we have a child here that is the youngest diagnosed ever of an ultra rare genetic disease and his mother is having problems getting supplies just that he needs on a day-to-day basis to survive because of this hysteria and i think that you know people are not being compassionate they we're really seeing the true colors and the true nature of some of humanity not all of humanity but some of it and i feel like that's the part about this that really breaks my heart I also think- that was my friend jen she and i went to college together and were resident assistants i honestly think it's my ra roots that leads me to start thinking of ways to encourage community during social distancing she brings up many valid points here I want to talk about one in particular. There are many children who rely on programs through schools to receive what in some cases may be their only meal of the day. So it's important for all of us to consider what, as a community, can we do in order to help those who are most at risk from the side effects of social distancing. While we all aim to help slow the infection rate, we also need to think critically of opportunities that we have to help each other in what's definitely a tough time, and we're uncertain of how long this time will last. Make no mistake, there will be life after coronavirus. There was life after the Black Plague. There was life after the Spanish flu. So consider that it matters how we behave under pressure and in uncertain times. So be a good neighbor and stop hoarding that toilet paper. Special thanks to Jen for sharing her thoughts. If you have information or resources regarding organizations who are feeding children while schools are closed, please contact me on Twitter or Instagram using the handle at Oh, it's big Ron. That's at O H I T S B I G R O N. If you have some insight on coronavirus or want to tell me how you're spending your time, social distancing, you can reach out to me as well. Leave Your Theater is a production of Oh, It's Big Ron Studios. Theme music by the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder. If you like this show, check out our sister show, Time Well Spent. Leaving the Theater will be back soon, but for now, I'm going to stay on the couch. <laughs>